I was gonna make a video about how to get your $1,400 stimulus check, but that actually already happened this weekend, so you probably clicked on this video asking the question, now what? Well first, what to do crew, it's Ver, and believe it or not, it has been one year since I started working from home. I honestly remember it like it was yesterday. My company emailed everyone saying, let's do a three day trial on if a stay at home order were to happen, and then after three days of working from home to see if we're still productive, it happened. This is also the anniversary of the great TP shortage of the 21st century, and the stock market was hitting some fairly crazy lows due to uncertainty. This was also when the first stimulus check came out. And here we are a year later, and not the second, but the third stimulus check has come out, and you should have received it this last weekend, but if you haven't, there's certain criteria on how you would receive it. The criteria to receive the full $1,400, if you're not familiar, is if you're single and you make $75,000 or less annually, if you're the head of household and you make one hundred and $12,500 annually. And also if you're a married couple and you file jointly making less than $150,000 a year. And then the phase out in terms of getting the full amount versus a little bit less is actually a lot slimmer compared to before where you can make up to $100,000 as an individual and you make more than $80,000, you actually get zero money. If you're the head of household and making more than $120,000, that's phased out. And if you're a married couple making more than $160,000 annually, that's when it phases out too. And also keep in mind, it is $1,400 per individual and dependent. And it's based on your 2020 file tax status, or if you haven't already filed taxes, it would be based on your 2019 file tax status. And no, you cannot claim your partner, pets, or imaginary friends as a dependence to boost the amount of money that you can get. And also it doesn't really matter because the eligibility was already evaluated based on your latest tax return. Anyways, there are so many different things in the relief package that came out valued almost up to one $1.9 trillion, which includes unemployment assistance, where it'll boost $300 per week for unemployment. And also those benefits will extend until the end of September, as well as the first $10,200 will be tax-free for households making less than $150,000 a year. There will also be housing aid to help with rent, utilities, as well as mortgages for anyone who's struggling in that area, as well as anyone who has dependents or children. And it's really good for people who have kids who are six years old or less because you could get up to $3,600 per child. The tax credit obviously decreases as your child gets older, but if you're a single parent making less than $75,000, you qualify. And if you're filing jointly and you make only up to $150,000, then you also qualify. Again, you can't receive the tax credits for pets or imaginary friends, which that would be really nice. I personally live with my partner or my fiance and it would be cool to claim her. But the thing is, she's also an individual filer herself because she is a strong independent woman who also obliterates the like button. Yeah, okay. You can take part in this as well by stimulating that like button, so that'll let me know that you're enjoying this video, as well as help out my channel grow, and it could also help my video reach a broader audience who can use this information too. So with all the important information out of the way, let's get into the best ways that you can save, invest, or even spend the new money that you received or are still waiting on. This is really good because compared to last year with the rising unemployment and economic uncertainty, it might as well be the case with illness numbers going down as well as things are opening up, the money that you have now can be much more rewarding compared to last year. I'm all for spending money to your heart's content, but here are some things that I think and they are my opinion of how you can put yourself in a better position. So if anything were to happen, you'd be okay. Well, the first thing that I would do is break up that $1,400 to where you can pay off any debt, like your student loans if you have any, any credit card debt. You can also take some of it and put it into a down payment of a house. After all of that, you should be able to save half of it and put it into a bank account to spend later. I'm totally kidding about that because sadly you can't really pay for those things with just $1,400, but what you can do is first open up a high yield interest bank account that pays you anywhere between 0.2 or 0.7% on the money, and then just take that check and put it in there. I personally have a few savings accounts. One is with Ally Bank. I really like their customer service and their UI on their mobile app. But the other one is called Yada Bank, which I have a savings account that just has a 0.2% APY. But the cool thing is, is every $25 you save on there, you get this ticket and you could have the chance of potentially winning $10,000 weekly. 
It's sort of like the lotto where instead of paying for a lotto ticket and then you lose out on that and that money is gone, every week you just get another ticket and then you're saving your money at the same time and you could potentially earn more than that 0.2%. So it's just a fun way that I like to keep some of my savings in and it's also where I keep my emergency fund if I need it. So if you were to take that $1,400 and you put it into a Yada savings account, you would get 56 tickets and that's 56 chances to win $10,000 or even a Tesla. But anyways, if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. The point of this is just to have a place for you to put that $1,400 to keep it safe, as well as short term in the case that you actually need it. Second, use this money to put towards your essentials if it is a must. Last year was really difficult, and while things are looking more on the upside, it is most important to keep a roof over your head and food on the table. Besides that, the best use of your money is to make sure that you have food, shelter, as well as TP. And I've been to Costco lately, and there's definitely a lot there, so I hope it stays that way. Now, now third, after you put the money in your bank account and you already got your essentials or maybe you already had those things and you need another thing to check off your list, I would put the $1,400 towards an emergency fund. To me personally and many others, an emergency fund is three to six months of your essential spending, which could be your shelter, your food, really just anything to get you by. And basically having an emergency fund for those three to six months would be a hedge against if a global illness were to happen to shut down everything and then you'd have to get by for that amount of time to figure out what is next. That's the whole point of an emergency fund. It honestly wouldn't be wise if you don't already have an emergency fund and take that and invest it in the market due to its volatility, because I would hate to have the situation where you put your emergency fund in there, the market drops by 50%, and then now you have to cash out because things are hard and you have to pay for them, and that's just a bad situation. Keeping the ball rolling now, if you already have a emergency fund, then congratulations, you're honestly in a really good spot. You're in a good financial position. And honestly, that $1,400 is just an extra bonus for you to go and spend. But I also didn't even mention paying down debt. So let's take a short checkpoint here. Say you have that emergency fund, but you also have a lot of high interest debt on say credit cards. It would be wise to take some or all of your stimmy to pay down those debts because with that high interest rate over time, you might owe or actually you definitely will owe a lot more money if you just didn't pay that money at all. So consider taking some of your stimulus money or even all of it to pay this down or completely off. Other kinds of debt could be student loans, a car loan, or even a mortgage. I would personally say pay these debts down at your own discretion because usually the interest rates on these types of loans are at 5% or even lower. If you have any debt lower than 5%, you really can't lose either way if you pay it down faster or you just pay the minimums. The reason why I say this is because, for example, say you have federally backed student loans. Right now until September 2021, interest rates are actually zero. So using that money could be put towards something else to you know, fund your emergency fund or pay high interest debt. Or you can also use that money to pay off those student loans because any amount that you pay to your student loans goes directly to principal and no interest has occurred. Both ways don't really matter you win either way based on what you want to do. Same thing goes for a mortgage right now because the interest rates on those things are probably 4% or even less. I just personally refinanced a home with my fiance for just 2.75%. So we're honestly just paying the minimum and not trying to pay it down faster at all. We basically take the lower payment and then we take the rest and put it into a savings or we invest. Of course, if you don't have any income coming in and then you just got this check, you definitely should pay your mortgage or your rent because remember the second thing that I mentioned, it's an essential thing. You need a roof over your head. But again, it's up to you because either way you can can't lose. If you pay down the mortgage, you'll pay it down faster, or you can just pay the minimum or you afford whatever your payment is. And you can take the rest or the stimulus check to go buy the new KitchenAid set at Target. Both will make you happy. With the checkpoint over, the $1,400 is basically yours to spend if you have those first three things. If you have the bank account, if you have your emergency fund, if you have your essentials, you're basically good to go. I think a really cool idea is taking that money and investing in yourself. Essentially use that money to invest in new skills, learn a new thing to better position yourself in the workplace or potentially get a new job or get better at your own job that you're currently in. I mean, the sky's the limit here. It doesn't just have to be with work. It doesn't have to be with a hobby. I personally also got a new Peloton bike and my fiance got a Peloton treadmill. And we use that to invest in our health because we are sitting at home, working from home, hours on end, just sitting. And it's really bad. So we needed some exercise equipment since the gyms were closed for an extended amount of time. 
We got those and now we're exercising almost every day. And fifth, if you still have that $1,400 after the emergency fund, your expenses are paid, your debts are all paid off, you might as well invest it. The crazy thing about this point in time is even though a year ago there was a sharp dip in the stock market, it has recovered to the same and then blew past that point of time. Honestly, if you were able to buy a year ago at that lowest point, it's almost like you went back in time a few years. This is just my opinion, but basically with everything opening up, investing right now could be a a new starting point for the economy that is to come in the future just because of what's going on. Things can happen in an upward trend or even a downward trend. I mean, did you see GameStop lately? Look at what happened there. It was trading less than $10 just a couple months ago and then it shot up to over $100, I think $200 now. All I'm saying is, is if you have the extra money to invest it, go ahead and do it, and you could do something as simple as the S&P 500. These are all topics that are way out of scope of this video, but these are just some of the things that I'd like to mention. If I were to personally start investing right now, I would put that $1,400 into a Roth IRA account because the cool thing about the $1,400 stimulus check is that it is tax-free. And any tax-free money that you contribute to a Roth IRA is tax-free when you pull out at retirement. I personally have a Roth IRA and it's through Vanguard where I invest in VT Sachs, which is basically an index fund that tracks all US stocks. So if you want something super simple like that, that's just a suggestion that I can give. But again, that's up to you. This is just my opinion on using the $1,400 towards your essentials, building up your emergency fund, as well as keeping it in a safe spot until you actually need it. And if I were to make this video a year ago, the tone would have been completely different but the approach would have been the exact same. Anytime you receive some money, there is an impulse behavior where you need to go out and buy the new PS5, but it should be taking a step back and evaluating what you need, and if you're good to go, take it, spend it, or invest it. If you're gonna spend that money, I mentioned earlier investing yourself, you can also support a local business, support the local community, or just really anything that can put you in a better spot than you are now if you're struggling. If you're not, honestly, it's just a bonus to you, but at the same time, things are on the upside, Hopefully we won't have the same thing that happened last year and you'll be good to go. Reason being is many people were struggling due to what happened last year and having these points in mind could change one's outcome. And we honestly don't know what could happen next, which is why you should always destroy the like button so this video can help an audience in need. And with that said, thanks so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know the next time I post a video on my channel. You can find me on Instagram. I post there from time to time and I do have fun there and you can have fun with me there. But also one last thing, don't forget to check out Millennial Investments. It's a website with many other creators just like me posting content on there to help you build your wealth. So if you enjoyed the video or you learned something, take that and get to work. Right. 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 Right.